We all have the imagination to dream as kids. Some of us want to be a doctor, a teacher, even a magician. My dream was to make films and I started early. When I was seven, like most kids, I loved to watch movies. The romance, the music, all of it. So much so, I decided I wanted to make my own film. So I hand wrote a hundred page script, saved my pocket money and sent it off to film producers. After weeks of waiting, I got one reply. And though that reply was a rejection, it came with an important piece of advice. Never give up on your dreams. And here I am now, all these years later, giving you the same advice. Never give up on your dreams. Now, I hated school as I've never been very good at following rules, so it just wasn't a good fit for me. I remember this particular teacher who used to watch me staring out the window and say I was a daydreamer who'd never amount to anything. When I was 14, I left school without any qualifications to pursue my ambitions. Unsurprisingly, it was harder than I thought it would be. Back then, there was no internet or an easy route into filmmaking like there is today, and I soon found out that gaining a foothold in the industry was way out of my reach. So, for the next few years, I started to feel like my teacher was right as I drifted in and out of dead-end jobs. At one point, my sister encouraged me to go back to college and continue my education. Reluctantly, I decided to take her advice. A year later, I was accepted into university where I studied journalism. I felt totally out of place. There I was at 27, surrounded by 18 year olds, straight out of school and academic books that I couldn't make sense of. I was behind for ages and felt like I couldn't keep up. I was on the verge of giving up every day, but something in the back of my mind wouldn't let me. It was as if an invisible force was directing me onto a path and I had no choice but to follow. So I kept going. I kept writing and eventually the work started getting easier. Three years later, I did it. I completed my degree. But the struggle didn't end there. I left university and not much changed. I was just in better paid dead end jobs, still drifting along without any real purpose. And it felt like it would be this way for the rest of my life. But then I started to think outside the box. I became more conscious of the direction I wanted my life to go in. Now, not to go backwards in my story, but there's an important reason that I loved one particular film so much when I was a kid. And that reason was Olivia Newton-John. At the time, I didn't really know what my feelings meant, but I was absolutely obsessed with her. It wasn't until I was 14 that I told my parents I was gay. From that point onwards, I embraced my sexuality and I was lucky enough to have a family who accepted me for who I was. But it was society that seemed to have an issue with the way they viewed gay women. This was really brought home to me in a bookshop one day. I asked the person behind the counter where I could find lesbian fiction novels, and she directed me to the erotica section. This really annoyed me, but it proved to be the catalyst for me wanting to make a change. I started to toy with the idea of writing my own novels and to tell real stories of life and love as a gay woman without having to make it all about sex. But like most people are at some point in their lives, I was scared of failing. What if I wasn't as good as I thought I was? In 2009, I got a call and I found out that my dad had suddenly passed away without warning. My dad was also a dreamer. He gave up a steady job working on the railway to start his own business. This not, might not seem like a big deal now, but it was back in the 80s, 
And taking that kind of risk when you had six children to provide for was seen as crazy by most people. But I always admired him for it. In his later years, all my dad ever wanted was to pay off his mortgage and own a family home. That was his dream. When he passed away, he was a thousand pounds away from achieving it. Had he lived another month, it would have been paid. As I stared down at my dad's last mortgage payment, I realised how short life is. And I decided then I was going to go over to my dreams. I would make my dad proud and I wouldn't let his hard work and dedication go to waste. During this period of grief, <coughs> there was this stillness that I'd never experienced before. And it was around this time I started to write my first novel. I was determined to change the narrative of the way lesbian fiction was viewed. Thinking that I'd found my calling, I wrote another 25 novels over the years, but something was still missing. It took me some time to realise what it was. It was time to put my childhood dream into action. It was time to make my first film. In 2018, I wrote a short screenplay based on a short story that I'd written. And to date, we've made 13 short films, two feature films, and we're in the process of filming our third feature. We all face obstacles, whether that's lack of money, support or resources. That's why we've got to take it upon ourselves to be the change we want to see in the world, no matter how small. And we do this by taking action, by doing things rather than just thinking about them. I look at it like this. A dream is the seed and action is what enables growth. And the area I want to see growth in is a film industry and the lack of representation of women and the LGBT community in front of and behind the camera. I focus on writing scripts where the character's sexuality isn't always the main focus of the story. I don't tend to write about women coming out or battling with their sexuality. And now I'm not saying that there isn't a place for those journeys in storytelling. But creating a variety of roles in different genres is important because it impacts not only the way that society views women, but women themselves. Representation comes in many forms, and I write about strong female characters who happen to also love women. I decided to start an independent film company, which meant that the days of gatekeepers deciding who gets to make films was no longer a barrier for me. Being an independent filmmaker means I can write and produce the stories I want to. I always encourage women to apply to work with us or come on set for work experience in our films. To date, women make up the vast majority of our cast and crew. But we can only do so much. The drive has to come from women themselves. So what would I say to someone who wants to get into writing or filmmaking? Do it. There's nothing stopping you from writing a script or picking up a camera. It doesn't matter what you've studied, either at school or university. Use the tools you have and use the creativity within you. Put pen to paper, film stuff on your phone, find tutorials online. Your first piece of work probably isn't going to win you an Oscar, but you have to start somewhere and then you have to follow through. Start contacting filmmakers on social media and ask questions. If you are LGBTQ, reach out to filmmakers in the, in the community. We support each other in getting our voices heard. When I started, I had no experience with script writing or directing. I simply threw myself into it and I'm still learning till this day. The learning never stops because the industry never stops growing and evolving. Now, I cannot stress this enough. No one is going to come looking for you, no matter how great you are. No one is going to come knocking on your door with an opportunity. You must be proactive. You have to hustle. 
you have to be relentless. You have to put yourself out there to be seen and for your voice to be heard. Was I scared to put my plans into action? Yes, but I believed in them enough to take the leap. Did I lack confidence? Yes. Was I scared? Absolutely. But I forced myself to show up, even when I really just didn't want to. But do you know what trumped all of those fears? The fear of regret. I asked myself, do I want to leave this lifetime regretting that I didn't take every opportunity to make my dreams a reality? The answer is no, and neither should you. Thank you.